Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019. I want to start this section by taking a look at the cost so far on the bathroom refit project because in this section we're going to look at some of the other costs that can be incurred in a project of this type but also some of the other ways that you can deal with cost in Project 2019. Now the first thing I want to do is take a look at Task Usage View again. So I'm going to jump across to the View tab and click Task Usage. And you may recall when we looked at this before that we can see the work for each of the tasks and where resources are assigned to a particular task, we can see the amount of work that each resource is scheduled to do. So if I right click anywhere on the details column here, so if I hover over where it says work and right click my mouse, it brings up a contextual menu. And this is a list of the items that I can show in the right hand half or the time phased half of this display. And not only can I show work, but I can show actual work, cumulative work, baseline, and I can also show, amongst other things, cost. So let's click on that. Now if I show cost with the current time scale enabled, I can show the cost of each of the tasks and where relevant, each of the resources. So for example, if I look at task 24 here, select and order tiles, although I'm not charging my time to the project for this, this is something I'm going to do myself. So the work I'm going to do as a resource is not chargeable. Now the cost of the tiles is chargeable. And because the accrual is specified as at the start, select and order tiles, which starts on a Friday, the cost of the tiles, $18 per square meter, $624 is chargeable to my project on that Friday. And in fact, that's the same day that the floor tiles are chargeable as well, which you can see down here. And that's a charge of $432 for the project. And one other point to notice here, which can be quite confusing, but it's important to understand. Because we've assigned this resource to a task, so the floor tiles resource is allocated to the select and order flooring task, Project assumes that we're actually going to consume this resource on this task, even though what we're actually doing is paying for it on this task. Now there are a couple of other ways that you can deal with that and we're going to be looking at those a little bit later on in this section. But it's important to realise that some of the assumptions that Project 2019 makes when you assign a resource to a task are not necessarily how things are in reality. But if, as in this case, the cost works fine doing it that way, showing the cost when you buy the tiles, even though you're not using them. But if, as in this case, the cost works out fine, as in showing the cost when you buy the tiles, even though you're not using them in that buying task. Now, don't forget that as before, we can actually change the outline level. So if I wanted to look at these costs at level one, I can jump back up to the view ribbon, click on outline and select level one. Now you can see the cost profile of the whole project starting to develop. Now what I want to do is to go back to the Gantt chart and do something else which we haven't done so far. Now we've looked at our project with a number of different views. Apart from changing the view, you can change the specific table that is shown on the left hand half. So for example, the Gantt chart view. And what I want to do here is choose a different table. So on the view tab, in the tables drop down, instead of selecting the entry table, I'm going to show the cost table. Now what the cost table shows me is a breakdown of the cost for my project at the appropriate selected level. Now you can see that for each of the phases here, I have a total cost, a baseline cost, a cost variance, and an actual cost on the end here. Now let's go to level two. And you can see a very detailed tabular breakdown of cost. And you can go right down to the level of checking the cost at any level of subtask. Now we still have the third type of resource to look at, and that is a cost resource. And I want to refer you back now to what I said just a moment or two ago about how project when you assign a material to a task, by default, we'll assume that you're going to consume that material uniformly during the task. 
and that may or may not be important in a particular project. Now one of the major costs that we haven't so far set up on this project is the cost of the bathroom equipment. And of course I could have a nice long shopping list of basins, taps, etc. and put all that into the project and show the individual costs. But supposing that all I want to do is to say that, well, I've already figured out the cost of the equipment and it's not consumed in the way that, say, paint is. It's just a cost to the project. And what I'm going to do is to set up the bathroom equipment itself as a cost resource. So again, let's jump across to our favorite resource sheet and I'm going to add a new resource and it's called bathroom equipment. And the type is cost. And when I set the type as cost, a number of things happen. One of them is that I can't put anything in the standard rate or the overtime rate. Now I can indicate how cost is accrued. And I'm going to say it's accrued at the end of the task. But note there is no calendar and there is no cost, etc. I enter the cost when I actually assign this resource to the relevant task. So let me jump back across to the Gantt and I'm going to identify the task that I want. So it's in the purchasing phase, expand equipment and it's this one here, select and order equipment. So we should be used to this by now, right click and assign resources. So we've got bathroom equipment selected, I'm going to click assign. And it's only when I click assign that I add in the cost. And the cost is going to be 3000. And you can see that that cost is now assigned to that particular task. Now the difference here is that project does not assume that there is a material being consumed. And if I went back to task usage and we look at that particular task, which is here, task 36, you'll notice that the cost of 3000 is accrued at the end of the task. So if you look at the dates up here and refer to the finish date, which is March the 26th, you can see that cost doesn't come into effect until that date. Now I hope from that you're starting to get a reasonable idea of how the different types of resource work and the situations in which each of them is most suitable. So where you have an amount of work or perhaps a duration of a task, often it's work resources that are best for that. Where you have a task where it's an amount of a resource that's used, very often material is good for that. Whereas where the cost is some kind of fixed figure, then often a cost resource is a good approach for that. Now there are a couple of other examples of costs that I want to show you here. And the first of them is a fixed cost that may be a specifically associated with a task. Now in this case, you might think of this as sort of the equivalent of the delivery cost of the tiles. But this is not a fixed cost associated with one of the resources used on a task. This is a fixed cost associated with the task itself. So let's jump back to the Gantt chart. And let's look at an example. So I'm going to scroll down to the electrical costs area and you'll see one of the items there is certification. So task ID 50. We need to get certification from the local authority on electricity. And there is a standard charge for getting that certification of $75. And you can see that the first column that we have here is a fixed cost column. So for certification, I'm going to type straight into this column $75. And that needs to be paid up front. So that's the cost that's accrued at the start of this particular task. Now note, it's not to do with the resource. It's not to do with the amount of material. It's not actually associated with a resource at all. So it makes sense to put this in as just a standard fixed cost. The last example of a cost that I want to tell you about is a budget cost. Setting up budget costs is not very intuitive and you really need to know a little bit about how they work in order to remember and understand how to set them up. 
So let's suppose that on this project, I expect that I'm going to have some incidental expenses. So I'm going to need to pay for maybe some uh, glaze or maybe a bit of beading or some plastic strips or something around here that's really incidental to the overall project. So I'm going to have to allow for the fact that I might need those expenses. I've probably got some idea of what they're going to be, so I need to allow myself $300 over the whole of this project to pay for those little incidental expenses. So what I can do is set up a budget cost, but a budget cost applies to the whole project. And in order to set that budget cost, you create a budget resource and then assign it to the project summary task. So once again, let's jump across to the resource sheet and set up our budget resource. I'm going to call this resource incidental expenses. It's a cost and we'll give it the initials of incidental. And I'm going to leave the accrual as prorated. And then what I do is to open up the resource information dialog. And you can do that in a number of ways. I'm just going to double click. It's the quickest and the easiest way. And I'm going to check the box that says budget. Note the other checkbox here, generic. That's used for generic resources, which we're not going to look at at the moment, but it is something that you'll come across later in your use of Project 2019. And click OK. So there's my budget resource. Let's jump back to the Gantt chart. And let me select the project summary task. So that's the one right at the top to summary task information, which is this big button here in the properties group on the task tab. And notice that this dialog box is called summary task information. Go to the resources tab. And from the drop down, select my resource, which is incidental expenses. And it's worth noting that you can only assign budget resources to the project summary task. You can't assign them to any other task within the project. You also cannot enter a cost at this stage. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So we're just going to leave it with the resource name and click on OK. Now we go back to task usage view. And what you see at the right at the top there is our project summary task. And then underneath we have our single resource, incidental expenses, which is of course a budget resource. Now what I'm going to do is change tables so that we can see the cost. So up to the tables drop down and select cost. I'm just going to make a little bit more room, so I'm also going to include this add new column item just here. Now what I'm going to do is add a new column. So I'm going to just select the baseline column and I'm going to right click and select insert column. And what I can do here is I can insert any type of column that I like. So I want a column that's going to show the budget cost and these are all in alphabetical order. So it shouldn't be too difficult to find because it is a B. And if we go all the way down here, I'm going to select budget cost. And there we go, I have my new column. And I'm going to add into here for incidental expenses, $300. So that makes it very easy to keep track of any budget costs that we have in the project. Now, as you'll see later on, when we start tracking cost, I'll also need to manually track this cost. So if at the end of the first month I've spent $127, I'm going to need to show that I've spent $127 of those $300. But that's how to set up a budget cost on a project. Now, as far as cost goes, that's certainly enough to get us started. And it's certainly enough for us to start to build up a good cost profile and a reasonable project cost. But that's the end of this section. I will see you in the next one.